In today's video, I'm going to show you how simple it is to build an RTMP server on a Synology NAS inside of a Docker container. If this is your first time with us, be sure to subscribe and make sure you hit that little bell so that you're alerted to when I release new content. What is RTMP? Well, it stands for Real-Time Messaging Protocol, and today it's mostly used to deliver a stream from an encoder to an online video source, such as YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and several others. Now, the encoder can be software-based like OBS Studio or hardware-based like many of the newer ATEM switchers. If you'd like to take a deeper dive into RTMP, I'll post the video up above and down in the video description from Wowza Media Systems. They did a quick video covering the history, the evolution, and the future for RTMP. They did a really great job in a short video, so be sure to check that out. But for today, all you really need to know is that it delivers a stream from an encoder to your online video source. So now that you have a basic understanding of what RTMP is and what it's used for, you might be asking yourself, if you can stream to any of the previously mentioned services, why build your own RTMP server? Well, let me give you a couple of use cases. For one, let's just say you wanted to stream to multiple platforms like Twitch and YouTube and Facebook simultaneously. You might have to use a subscription service like StreamYard or Restream.io. That's where building your own RTMP server comes into play. If you're like me and you like to tinker, then you can build your own server and then push the streams out to those platforms simultaneously all at once. Now, another use case would be, let's just say you wanted to have guests like I'm showing you here on the screen and you wanted to stream out to all of these guest channels simultaneously. Again, that would be another use case for an RTMP server. So enough said. Let's get back to the video and get started with the build on the Synology NAS. Okay, so I'm signed into my Synology and the first thing you need to do is get Docker installed on the system. So let's come up and click on the package center and just come up to the search bar and type in Docker and hit return or enter. You see it comes back as one of the results. Now, mine says open because I already have it installed on the NAS. But if you're doing this for the first time, it'll say install, just like these other three applications here. So go ahead, click on the install button for Docker, follow the wizard, and get it installed. Once the installation is complete, click open, and it'll launch the Docker application. It'll bring you to the overview tab, and you can see the CPU usage and the RAM usage. And here it says no running container. If we click on the container tab, you can see again that we don't have any containers created. So next we're going to click on registry and we're just going to search for the engine X RTMP server. Now the one I've been testing is from an image or a gentleman by the name of Tiangelo. So I'm just going to search in engine X RTMP and hit return enter. You can see we get a bunch of returns and here's the image that I've been using. Now to download the image, simply double click it or select it once and then just click download. That's a matter of your preference. So if you're getting any value from this content, please smash that like button. It lets YouTube know you like what we're doing here at the channel. Now, let's get back to the video. I'm not going to download it because I already have it saved to the images folder. And you can see here it is. So to launch the image once it's fully downloaded, just double click it. And you can follow the wizard now here. Let's go through this together. We can give the container a name, but I'm just going to leave it set to Tiangela Nginx RTMP1, the default for now. What I am going to do though is enable resource limitation and I'm just going to limit the memory to 2048. And then let's click on the advanced settings. There's two things I wanna do in here. I wanna enable auto restart. And you can see if we hover over this, it says when a container encounters an improper shutdown, the container will try to restart. And that's what we want it to do. And then let's click on network and then I'm just going to enable use the same network as the Docker host and click apply. Once we have all that done, let's click on next. And it's just giving us a summary, just confirm everything. And I have it set to run this Docker container after the wizard has finished. Again, that's a personal preference, but I'm going to leave this checked for the purpose of this video. We'll click apply. And now if we have, we come back up to the container tab, we can see that the container is running 
the CPU usage, the RAM usage, and the uptime. So now that we have our container installed, and you see it was that simple to spin it up on the Synology NAS, it's time to edit the Nginx config file so that it knows what services we want to stream out to. Okay, so I'm signed into my Synology NAS via SSH. And what we're going to do now is we are going to get into the root level of our container. And in order to do that, we need to type in a couple of commands. So I'll list all those commands down in the description below for your reference. Once we find out the container ID, we get into the root level of the container. We're going to install nano so that we could edit the Nginx config file so that we can tell Nginx the services, the online services that we want to stream out to. So let's get started first by finding out what our Docker container is. So the command for that is sudo docker container ls. And it's asking for the password. And that's the password I use to sign into the Synology. And here it lists all of the Docker containers installed on the system. Now I only have the one container installed. And the information we want is this right here, the container ID. So let me highlight that and copy it because we're going to need that as part of the next command. And this next command is going to get us into the root level of that Docker container. sudo docker exe space dash it, now the container ID, followed by the word bash. And there we go. If you notice the prompt change, now we're at the root level of the D'Angelo container. Next, we're going to install nano. So we're going to use the command apt get update and we're just going to let it go out and do its thing update whatever it needs so that the next step we can do and it's finished we could install nano so now we're going to say apt install nano and we'll just wait while it installs nano and once this is done we'll go into the nginx config file and we'll add our RTMP URL in this case for YouTube. Okay, so it looks like it's done. So we're just the next command to get into the edit the config file is nano space forward slash etc forward slash nginx forward slash nginx dot c o n f. And now you can see we're inside the file. So the next thing we need to do is use our arrow key. And we're just going to come down to just under record off. And we're just going to put in a space. And we're just going to arrow back up. And the command we're going to use now is a push command. So we're going to say push space. And then we're going to go out to YouTube now to our live stream and get our streaming URL, which is right here. And then you need a second piece of information, which is your streaming key. So let's just copy the stream URL for now. And you can see it's rtmp colon slash slash x dot rtmp dot YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to take that. We're going to come back into our file and we're just going to paste it in. And the next thing we're going to do is add a forward slash. And this is where you would add your stream key. So you would go back to YouTube, copy your stream key and put it in. But for now, I'm just going to put your stream key here. And assuming that was your stream key, you would end it by putting in a semicolon. Now, if all you wanted to do was stream out to your channel, you're done. However, in the example I used earlier of bringing in guests and streaming out to all of the guests' channels, including yours, simultaneously, all you need to do is add the additional push and push commands with those channels, streaming URLs, and stream keys. So enter, push. And then we'll paste another YouTube URL and then followed by the channel's stream key, semicolon, create another line, and we'll do the same thing, push, and then forward slash, and then the other channels, repeat the same thing, the other channel's stream key. And then end with a semicolon. And then finally, we're going to hit Control X. And yes, we want to modify it. So we're going to say Y. And then we want to keep the same name. So we're just going to hit OK. 
So if you're getting any value from this content, please smash that like button. It lets YouTube know you like what we're doing here at the channel. Now, let's get back to the video. Okay, so now that we've made the changes to the Nginx file, I'm back in the Synology and we're just gonna stop and start the container so that those changes can take effect. So let's do that now. Let's just come over to Docker. Let's go to containers, select the container, and we're just gonna stop it and then just start it back up again. And there you go. So now we should be able to stream out to YouTube using the information if we had actual real stream keys in that Nginx config file. Now, if you really want to see that in action, I did a video a couple weeks ago where I put together an edge router site to site and then we did a stream from the ATEM actually over the VPN out to the RTMP server and then out to YouTube. I'll put a link to that video up above as well as down in the video description below. So if you found any value in today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have listed up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you again, as I always do, for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. And as always, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters, including our most recent gold member, Dennis Pillow. And if you would like to help support the channel, there's links to the Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description.